I had studied social justice. I come from a family that worked in the civil rights movement. I consider myself an activist. I was very interested in, in social justice history, American history and, and the themes um, of oppression and power. And so when I graduated from college, I wanted to change the world and I had no idea what to do with myself. I was like, I just want things to change. I don't know. Uh, I have all this energy and, and all this passion, but I don't know, I don't know where to put that. And I joined the Spirituals Project Choir. And singing the songs with the choir made me feel like I was learning more about American history, about this specific part of American history in slavery than I had ever learned in my life, in any book, in any class. I felt like singing these songs, there was something historical, something spiritual imbued in them that can't be explained in any other way. And my experience in the choir is actually what has led me to pursue a PhD and continue this work. So cool. it's a huge, it's, it's been a huge influence on my life. So, uh, and it's a great homecoming to come back to this awesome conference and I'm really excited to see all the speakers and, and thank you so much for coming to this strangely titled <laughs> presentation. Um, song of the Commodity. So the song, songs are the spirituals. These songs that we're singing and that we're hearing about and learning about today came out of a time when horrors that are unimaginable to most of us happened to, to black people and, and to all people, really. Um, colonialism is just as poisonous for the oppressor as the oppressed. A commodity is something that is bought and sold. So you go to Walmart and buy this, this is a commodity. You. Um, have your fancy phone, that's a commodity. Back in the day, people were commodities. Black mm -hmm. people were commodities. Just, just that's, that's what this is about. That's, this is about song of the person who is considered to be a thing, something you can buy and sell and use for their labor and not compensate them for because they are not considered to be human. So use value, exchange value. Black people were creating goods cotton, things like that, for exchange, so that people who were owners could exchange these things and get money for them, and not compensate the people for their labor. The spirituals exist outside this altogether. No one is buying and selling these songs at this moment in time, but they're making them anyway, because they have a use value for people, and the use value is is spiritual. It's it's the adjective version of the noun spirituals. It's it's a spiritual uh, intervention into asserting one's own humanity at a time when they're considered a commodity or a thing. It's music. To think about this music, the spirituals, as something that was made by people who owned nothing. They could not, by, by definition, own anything because they were themselves owned, but still made this music. And this music uh, has influenced every genre of music made in America since. You know, rock and roll, the blues, <coughs> jazz, all of these different genres are essentially what I'm calling African musical sensibilities 
rhythmic and melodic sensibilities, things that were brought along with these people as cargo across the ocean. Children don't get weary, children don't get weary until your work is done. You know, America was a good idea, and you kind of really refer to that, but we, we're trying to make America, help America become the country we always thought we wanted to be. And we haven't gotten there yet. And so the voices of people who have experienced um, the oppression and have not been at the top are voices we need to begin to listen to now, I think. Uh, because I've always wondered, is, is it really racism? Is racism, is discrimination, is all of that, is it, is it, is it a problem or is it a symptom of a, a mm. greater problem, mm -hmm. which I consider to be control of others, control of their money, control Power. And so you will use whatever. I mean, if you want power, if you want. Because music is an oral art. It's what you hear. And I think if young people never get the chance to hear a choir or a group of people singing four part harmony, they have no idea. <laughs> Sometimes.